Hey guys, Zach here, and welcome back to another action figure review. And today, we'll be taking a look at the Jurassic Park Amber Collection Velociraptor. Um, this is probably going to be the last Amber Collection video you see from me for a while. Uh, mainly because this is pretty much it. Uh, just Ian and the Velociraptor. At least as of when I'm recording this. Um, by the time I upload this, there's probably going to already be Owen, Charlie, and Blue, which are other figures that are soon to be released in the Amber Collection, which I'm not going to get. Mainly because, one, I don't like Owen at all, and two, I don't like the Raptor Squad at all. I don't like Charlie... Echo, Delta, Blue, I don't like any of them. I like, you know, the traditional Raptors, so, yeah. So, I won't be getting those. However, later on this year, as of 2020, um, we're actually later on supposed to get a two-pack, which consists of the Dilophosaurus and Dennis Nedry, so I might pick that up, but I also might not pick that up. Uh, when it comes to the Ember Collection, I'm not really the biggest fan. Like, if I just so happen to see them, like, how it was with these figures, then I'll probably pick it up, but, you know... Like, I won't go out of my way to, like, order them online or anything like that, so, yeah. So, if I see Dennis and the Dilophosaurus, I'll definitely pick him up, but if not, well, yeah. I'll most likely see him if I see him in stores or whatever, but, yeah. The Amber Collection as a whole, it's not bad, but it's not something I'd go after. Personally, I'd prefer the Legacy Collection, but, well, that's kind of dead right now, so I doubt we'll see anything else from that in the future, so... Yeah, anyway, with all of that out of the way, let's just get into this. So before I take a look at the Raptor herself, we'll take a quick look at the packaging she comes in. And as you can see here, it's pretty much the same as Ian's box, except, you know, bigger, in order to fit the Raptor. Uh, we have Velociraptor here, Jurassic Park. Up here, Amber Collection. In the corner, we have the Jurassic Park logo. On the side, we again have the Jurassic Park logo. And on the other side, we have the Mosquito Trapped in Amber. And underneath that, it says Amber Collection. On the back, we have a nice picture of one of Stan Winston's maquettes and a bio. So if you want to pee, uh, excuse me, pause and read it now, then go right ahead. So, yeah. Anyway, take a look at the top. We have some fossils and more of the amber sort of painting or detailing or printing or whatever going on. Which looks alright. And if we look at the bottom, then we'll see some legal information and a price tag. And we'll take a look at that in a second. And when I say second, I mean at the end of the video. So, yeah. Anyway, now we'll take a look at her accessories. And she only gets one. Technically two, but it's mainly one. And unfortunately, we again get the urine stone that she stands on. And, again, I'm just not a big fan of this whole amber gimmick with this line. Like, I get that, you know, the dinosaurs were created from the mosquitoes in amber. At least in the original Jurassic Park, you know, or, yeah, like Jurassic Park and all this. You know what I mean. So I get that, but I just think basing your toy line off of that is just kind of stupid. So, yeah. Uh, that To me, that was just an excuse for why the dinosaurs are still alive, but, yeah. I'm not a big fan of this. And as you can see here on the arm hair, um, there's a peg. Where does that peg into? Well, let me show you. You take the raptor, and the hole is in a very unfortunate spot. And basically all you have to do is just sort of plug that in, and then you'll hear a click, and then there you go. You could have her standing or in any sort of pose or whatever, so yeah. Again, I think the raptor can stand fine without this, so again, I'm probably just going to put this back in the box and never take it out, so... Yeah, I don't like that. So, now for the Raptor herself. And I gotta say, I almost love this figure. This is almost a great figure. There's just one thing that I really don't like about it. Other than that, this thing is great. So, let's take a look. So, first, we'll take a look at the painting. And the painting on this figure is very nice. So, as you can see here, most of the body is this brownish color. With a darker shade of brown for, like, an airbrushing along the top here, which looks nice. And that continues all the way through the head here. And taking a look at the head really quick, we can see that the eyes are painted sort of like an emerald green color, which actually looks very nice, very clean. Um, it doesn't really bleed into the skin much, which is good to know. Uh, usually when it comes to Mattel, there usually are a lot of paint defects, but when it comes to the Amber Collection, I haven't seen any reports of anything major. Of course, Ian had a few paint blemishes, but it wasn't anything too bad. But anyway, going to the inside of the mouth here. We can see that all the gums and whatnot are painted pink, and the teeth are painted a bonish white color, which does look nice. 
and we'll close that. The fingernails are painted a blackish color. And these aren't the most neat thing I've seen. Um, a little bit of the brown kind of bleeds on there, but it's very small. So it's not the end of the world, but it's still something worth pointing out. And the toenails here are painted black as well. And going to the tail here, we actually do have some stripes. It might be a little hard to see due to the lighting, but again, we do see some very faint sort of stripes, which do look nice. They're not on the uh, they're not on the back of the actual animal, but they're just on the tail, which I think is a little weird, but it's fine for the most part. So yeah. And that's pretty much it for the painting on this figure. Um, the toenails and fingernails aren't the cleanest when it comes to paint, but everything else looks very good. So the paint definitely gets a pass. Now I'll take a look at the articulation, and the articulation is what I don't necessarily like about the figure. For the most part, it's great, don't get me wrong, but you know, we'll talk about it when we talk about it. So first we'll start off with the head. The jaw can open like so. And, just like with the Super Colossal Rex, it can open up like that as well. So I like that. So you could either have her kind of like looking up like so, or just have her roaring down at something, or growling. And I actually really like that. I think that's neat. I think the, you know, it's a little too wide for raptors, but again, you know, it's interesting. And I appreciate that, so yeah. Anyway, we have a ball joint here, and a ball joint here. The arms can move outward, like so, and can do a 360, though the legs do get in the way, but it's fine because the elbows move. There's a bend here, and again, a swivel. And we have the same joint for the wrist here, a uh, bend and swivel. Going to the legs here, let me just fix the arm really quick, we can see that they can move about 360, though they do kind of stop at some points. Which is a little frustrating, but, like, if you move it and then, like, it just sort of, like, snaps into place. And I'm not really the biggest fan of that, but, you know, it's whatever. I guess it's either, uh, excuse me, easier to, like, stand up, but, like, yeah, um, yeah, not great, but not awful either. But anyway, the knee here can bend like so and can swivel 360. And I still don't know what this uh, joint is. I don't know if this is like an ankle or like... Because I know the ankle's right here. So like, I don't know what this could be. I don't know. Uh, please let me know in the comments below. So, yeah, but anyway. The same joint as with the arms and legs and whatnot. So, yeah. And the feet can move downwards like so. And can move 360. So, yeah. And something that's actually really cool. And something we actually don't really see in a lot of Jurassic Park figures... Uh, the sickle claw here can actually move downwards like so, which is honestly much appreciated. It moves clean here, but it doesn't move perfectly here, so, yeah. Now we'll get to the tail, and the tail is what I really don't like about the articulation here. As we have a ball joint here, but for some reason, they decide to go with a bendy wire. Now, I know a lot of people like bendy wires, but... I cannot stand them, because at first, like, yeah, you could pose it any way you want, you know, everything's great, but when it snaps, like, that's it, you're done, you can't really pose the tail anymore. And that's one thing I prefer when it comes to the Indoraptor figure that I haven't reviewed yet, but I'm going to get to that shortly. Um, definitely some point this year I'll review that, but that basically has kind of the same articulation as this, the only difference is that, you know... There are joints in the tail, so I like that much more than just the bendy wire. And then the bendy wire here is very limited. And I know NECA did the uh, bendy wire tails as well, but they stopped doing that and it didn't really work for them either. So, yeah. Not a big fan of the tail, but the rest of the articulation I think is still very good. So the articulation, for the most part, is great. It's just the tail I don't like. Other than that, it's great. So it gets a pass. Now take a look at the sculpt, and the sculpting here is perfect. Looks exactly like the Velociraptors from Jurassic Park. Um, there is one thing I'll say. Uh, we do have some scales in the back of the neck here, which I don't think were on the original JP Raptors. I think this was more seen in Jurassic World and not so much Jurassic Park, but I could be wrong about that. So, yeah. The sculpting here is great. Everything is sculpted perfectly, so... Yeah, everything here looks great, so the sculpting definitely gets a pass. Now I'll take a look at the detailing. And the detailing here, again, looks great. 
So taking a look at the head here, we can see all the scaling and creases are detailed very nicely. Everything here is very nicely defined, and even the nostrils there. The nostrils there look great. And on the inside of the mouth, we can see more detailing. And everything here is very nice looking as well. We do have a seam in the throat right here, which is very noticeable, but again, everything looks fine. And going to the neck here, again, we have more creasing and very small scales, which is actually very impressive how they're able to sculpt those in. Again, that actually looks very nice and very well defined, so good on you, Mattel. Going to the body here, we can see more creasing and folds, and the scaling here isn't as nicely defined as the neck, but it still looks nice. Anyway, going to the arms here, we have more creasing and a bit of musculature here, which again, looks very nice. And the claws are detailed very nicely as well. Going to the legs here, we can see more scaling, which again, look great. Very nicely defined. And again, just like with the arms, a very nice uh, bit of musculature here, which does look great. And the feet are detailed very nicely as well. Going to the tail here, we can see more of the creasing, more of the scaling. And again, everything here looks great. And we do get some holes here for the bendy wire, which again, I'm not the biggest fan of. So, yeah. And that is pretty much it for the detailing on this figure. And the detailing on this figure is actually very good. So the detailing definitely gets a pass. So at the end of the day, should you get this? Besides the bendy wire in the tail, I feel like that this is a very good figure. I actually like this a little more than Ian. Uh, actually, I'm just going to bring him in really quick. Um, Ian is not a bad figure at all. I actually like Ian a lot, but if I had to choose between the two, I'd say the Raptor, but Ian is also a very good figure. So, as a whole, these figures, the Amber Collection as a whole, I think is good. Um, it's just a shame that Mattel is trying to replace this with the Legacy Collection, or, you know... Like, again, I prefer the Amber Collection, or Amber Collection, uh, excuse me, Legacy Collection, because, you know, like, kids could play with those as well, so, yeah, that and they were smaller, so, again, like, space isn't so much of an issue, and it's not really an issue with these figures either, but, I don't know, I just think the Legacy Collection is better than this, but this is still not bad either way. Um, again, I'm still not going to get Owen or any of the Raptor Squad members, but when the Dennis Nedry and Dilophosaurus 2-pack comes out, then I'll definitely get those, so, yeah. Ian, as I talked about in the last video, is $25, and the Raptor here is $30, and honestly, the prices for these two, not bad. I think it's pretty fair. Um, these, uh, at least the Raptor here, cost as much as a basic NECA figure, so, yeah. So, it wouldn't be the end of the world if you got these, but if you do like highly articulated figures, then I'd say definitely go for these. Uh, these figures are definitely not bad. Uh, they don't scale well with each other. Uh, I think the Raptor is just way too small, and Ian is, you know, way too big, but... And even if we kind of, like, fix that a little, make him, or make the Raptor a little taller, and as you can see, yeah, no, the Raptor is still a little too small, so, yeah. Anyway, if you want to know how big she is, um... Besides, you know, being shown with Ian. Of course, as we do at the end of every video, here she is next to Dr. Billy Grin. And again, she is much bigger than him. Alright, now that is it for today. Have a great rest of your week, and I will see you in the next video. Peace, Zek out.